Hello there and welcome to the living room of the dollhouse for another reading from The Secret Language of Birthdays by Gary Goldschneider and you Stelfers for February 5th, the day of quiet eloquence. That's right. And in here at the top of the page is a visual representational image of the day of quiet eloquence. We have us an image of Oh, what could it be? Here we are kind of drilling down a little bit of a theme we've had the past few weeks. Boom. This one uh, is a mandolin and a giant thimble and or a, a small thimble and or a regular size thimble rather and a very small a mandolin. Now why I say is a little bit of a theme there? Well, they've been doing oversized, undersized type stuff. I don't know if that means something for the Aquarius period, but you know what? That's just the theme they decided to drill down on. Uh, that having been said, does that speak to the day of quiet eloquence? Uh, who's to say? I don't know. But, uh, you know, i just like you folks to know what I see here in front of me on the page. Provide a little bit of, a, I don't know, a visual representational image there. That said, uh, what is important here is it's February 5th, and hence, it's somebody's birthday. So, wishing you a happy birthday if it's your birthday. That's what's important. So, happy birthday. All right. And if uh, this video finds you late, I don't know, days, weeks, months, whatever the case may be, well, I hope you had a happy birthday in that circumstance. But for everybody else who's joining us randomly or more ideally to celebrate the February 5th birthday, I just want to say hello, welcome, hey, and I hope you enjoy yourself, all right? Now, before I dive in with the redirect, and I will dive into it, something I like to do around these here parts, and that is roll some dice. This is the Diecast birthday broadcast, so I like to live up to the namesake, but I do so more importantly... For synchronicity's sake, and I rolled us a four and a one for a five. Oh, and it's the company logo today. That's right, or at least the logo for the uh, for the cast here. Uh, that being said, you're probably wondering what synchronicity is. And, uh, well, let me just try to nut nutshell it here for you. Uh, oftentimes we get out in the world and we're very laser focused, all right? Sometimes we've got the blinders on to what's going on around us. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean we miss those things, but we might not lend them the credence that they, uh, you know, they might, does, they might require, I would say. Uh, and I say that because a lot of times I hear uh, that the universe will put things down in our path to help us realize our goals or manifest our aspirations. But if we've got those blinders up, hey, we might not be lending the credence to those particular things the universe or the higher powers that be are putting in our path. So this is a little bit of an exercise to get those blinders off and let uh, the universe show us it's with us on our path. And how do we do that? Well, we need a sign that we can't help but recognize. That's right. So why not? Or some numbers there. Now, you don't have to go with the numbers I rolled for you, but it's probably advisable you take a set of dice so you can ascribe directional values to number sets and time limits with which to go in those directions. That is, if uh, getting out there and trying to exercise this thing is something that you so desire. And if it is, well, so let's just say you get out to some place that's near and dear to your heart or perhaps some place that you haven't been before. All right. Uh, say the town square I often like to bring up because it's easy. Right. So when you get out there, you get your numbers all established. You know what? Like I said, get those blinders off because you never know. The day might start to take on a little bit of a theme to say something random might start pre uh, presenting itself into your your day on this journey here this exercise let's take the visual representational image uh, for instance a thimble or a mandolin you know, musical instrument of some sort you might just start to see it creeping up all over the place to say somebody walking down the street carrying one maybe there's somebody underneath a tree uh, you know hitting a little mandolin action on there some tremolo if you like or maybe there's somebody sewing underneath the tree I don't know. Or you just happen to see such things as in an advertisement or on the side of a building there as a, as a mural, if you like. It's just things to take note of, things to say, hey, you know what? There we go. There's a synchronicity. There's a coincidence, if you like. So you know you're on the right path. You taste a little bit of magic out there as you're on this uh, particular journey. That said, you get off after this first leg of your journey and maybe you're not seeing anything. You know what? Don't get disheartened, all right? Just uh, step on back, take in your surroundings, see what you see. Maybe you just so happen to notice, as I often like to say, boom, you might just be on 14th Avenue there. Little things like that just to help uh, firmly establish that you're on the right path. But let's say you don't see that. Let's say, oh, I'm at the end of this street and there's nothing to be seen. No numbers, nothing interesting, just the everyday goings on. Once again, don't get this heart and just roll your, your dice again. See what you see. Uh, maybe you head off in whatever direction it tells you to go. 
whatever time limit it says, maybe at the end of this particular time limit, hey, you find yourself in front of a building with, what's this? Oh, maybe it's old 14 in the address there, or five. You know what? Maybe maybe try to go into that building. Maybe it just so happens to be like, I don't know, a paint shop. You know, they mix up the various paints for you. Uh, you know, when you go in there, I know you're not probably in the market to be painting a room or picking up a gallon or whatever it is, but just go in see what you see you go in there maybe the person behind the desk says hey how can i help you today and you just be open transparent about what you're doing hey it's my birthday i'm here trying to just uh, you know make some coincidences or some synchronicities happen for myself and i go what are you talking about hey show me a dice show them this video yeah they're apt to think you're crazy but hey you have the perfect alibi just lump it on my shoulders i'm just trying to do what this guy's telling me here to try to stir up some magic some coincidences so the person's like so you're not here for pain Ain't no sir ma'am <laughs> like all right well there's the door and maybe uh, no sooner are you on your way out hey what's this you just so happen to uh run across somebody who goes hey did i hear it was your birthday today you're like yeah pretty crazy right uh, i'm just doing this thing that you probably overheard and they go yeah but what's really crazy is it's my birthday too I'm like oh how about that you never know. Maybe the person that's behind the desk trying to chase you out because you're taking the attention away from the customers. I don't know, but maybe they aren't having any of that. All right, hey, you gotta be nice to your customers, right? So maybe they leave with you and they go, hey, you know what, where, where are you off to next? And you go, I don't know. I'm letting the dice do the dictating in that realm. So maybe this individual's apt to join you on your journey. Maybe that was the whole point. It's just finding somebody of like mind, somebody who's apt to uh, focus on the same things you're going after, right? And you know what's great about that is the way I hear it, uh, the more people who are focused on the same thing, you're apt to manifest greater results. So you know what? Get out there, start drumming up some uh, synchronicities, stacking up some coincidences, coincidences, if you like, said properly, and you may just see the things that I'm trying to uh, kind of impart here. Stacking up that magic, if you like. Because if there's anything I can wish you on your birthday, it's that you're out there enjoying yourself and seeing, tasting, touching, intuiting a little bit of uh, magic, if you like, with things that just don't happen to you in your everyday life. So uh, there you go. There's your synchronicity. I think you get the idea. Let's dive in with that birthday reading I promised. All right. Your month is February. Your day is the 5th. Your sign is 15 to 17 degrees Aquarius of the Aquarius 2 period specifically. And your quality and elements is fixed air. All right. February 5th, the day of quiet elegance, eloquence rather, quiet eloquence. Those born on February 5 lend fluency and grace to most any endeavor. They have a convincing manner that in a quiet way announces that they mean business. Perhaps less eloquent with words than with deeds, February 5 people have a reassuring physical presence that suggests they can be relied upon in a pinch. And those born on this day that do have the verbal gifts often speak in a rather terse and direct manner, yet their speech has a compelling charm and imaginativeness. In February 5, people are insightful in their analysis of the current situation. And not everyone will agree with them by any means, as since their opinionated views tend to arouse opposition and their self-assured and somewhat breezy presentation can ruffle feathers. Most often, those born on this day only give their listeners one chance to understand. And if they are misunderstood, they may not bother to clarify or explain. Therefore, February 5 people must become more adept at smoothing over differences, taking time to illustrate in greater depth what they mean to say, and finally positing that they are ready to listen and cooperate as well. In February 5, people often make a direct appeal to the emotions of others, but in fact it is their own mental uh, concentrative abilities which are their forte. Admittedly, they themselves are emotional people, but the extent of their success may well be in direct proportion to their ability to keep the excitable part of their nature under control. Highly evolved February 5 people have a sophisticated poise which can be very reassuring indeed, especially in difficult situations in which they are called upon to take a lead. 
However, the sense of co uh, confidence can sometimes arouse irritation, particularly if they adopt a condescending attitude. In February 5, people are many faceted individuals who show a great deal, but also hold a lot back. And they often lead secretive inner lives to which few are granted access, and many may nurture rather strange habits and neurotic rituals which give them a sense of well-being. In February 5, people can be very protective to those dear to them, but themselves can use the backing and protection of more powerful individuals or organizations. And most often, February 5, people can be found working for groups and organizations and contributing a great deal of energy to family and friends. And they are much less frequently freelancers or isolated artists, and even those who are self-employed, well, they generally work on collaborative projects. And in general, February 5, people, well, they must learn to let others catch up with their accelerated pace and make an effort to be more thorough so that their work can stand up to intense scrutiny. Well, all right, pretty interesting breakdown today. I would say it was somewhat uh, narrow of focus, kind of laser if you like, but I think they definitely expanded out uh, within that narrow scope to uh, provide a lot of value. And it's been a bit of a, a through line the past uh, few months here that they're very hyper-focused on these things, when beforehand they would be very well-rounded to say uh, incorporate uh, what a person's like as a parent, maybe even as a child, or uh, just what their family life is like. And here they didn't really necessarily do that, and so that's why I say it's kind of hyper-focused. But uh, some of these days, they don't even round it out the way they did for you today. They just hyper-focus on things and just keep drilling down on them. That having been said, uh, I like to provide a little bit of a commentary here, kind of go over things that was uh, in the breakdown, maybe make uh, connections to days previous, the period in general, and just things that I found uh, of interest. So let's dive in, shall we? February 5, the day of quiet eloquence. Oh, and let me define eloquence for you here if, uh, so we can have a general consensus as to what it means here. Though I'm sure you know what it means. Let's see what we got here. Adapted to express strong emotion uh, or state facts and arguments with fluency as well as power. All right, let's see if that lines up, though. I would agree that based on the breakdown, it seems to apply. All right, here we go. Uh, you're lending fluency and grace to most any endeavor, and you're said to have a convincing personality uh, that conveys your seriousness in a quiet manner, uh, though the book relates that you're apt to do so more with your actions than with your words. Uh, not to say there aren't those who don't have a useful command of language. It's just said that uh, this is more apt to manifest in direct ways with charm and imaginative realizations. A couple of these traits with a purported reassuring physical presence that conveys a sense that you can be relied upon. I'm apt to imagine that if you didn't somehow stand out in a crowd, if someone were to bump into you that they would want to stick around and that you would otherwise leave an indelible impression if they had to leave. Uh, nevertheless, you're said to be self-assured in a way that your opinions and your insightful analysis may arouse opposition, all right? And you may not be of a desire to lend such disconnects very much concern, uh, even if it's on account of a simple misunderstanding, uh, which the reading takes time to suggest ways of rectifying. Uh, so by and large, it sounds as though an air of condescension or a holier-than-thou kind of status may be a chief obstacle that you encounter when interacting with others. Uh, but that doesn't mean you're not an emotional feeling individual yourself. It just sounds as though that your uh, face value comportment or your behavior, that is, uh, slash your public persona may be uh, the projected result of you keeping that otherwise uh, excitable part of your nature, as they claimed, under control. All right. At least the way I read the breakdown. All right. So uh, I don't know, that's just your way of being very contained and controlled, and it might come off somewhat standoffish, if you like. 
Uh, which chiefly leaves me to wonder what that excitable nature looks like if you let it out, all right? Especially if, as the reading also claims, you lead secret inner lives uh, with strange habits and new erotic uh, rituals. That's right. What, what are those things? It'll be kind of interesting to hear. Uh, and with a mention of receiving help and protection from powerful individuals and organizations, ideas of uh, sophisticated poise, secret lives in a quiet manner uh, that means business, I can't help but think anyone granted access to what goes on behind the curtain is in for some interesting surprises. All right, yeah, just uh, what's going on behind the curtain there? Uh, that's, this thing just took some, uh, some interesting turns, right? You don't lead off the day thinking somebody might belong to, say, a, a secret society just based on the fact that they're uh, quiet eloquence and that they, they stand and cut an interesting figure. I don't know. But uh, that having been said, that has been the birthday breakdown. So let's move on to your numbers and your planets. All right. Those born on the fifth of the month are ruled by the number five in the planet Mercury, uh, which represents quickness of thought and change. And since Uranus, often called the higher octave of Mercury, it says in parentheticals, rules Aquarius, dynamic mental powers are granted to February five people, along with insight into the more universal objective truths. And whatever knocks or pitfalls those ruled by the number five may encounter, they usually recover quickly, which is particularly true for those resilient individuals born on February 5th. All right, uh, your numbers and your planets. Uh, this one was particularly personalized there. Yeah, they had some of the rote stuff in there to kind of uh, convey Mercury and such, but they don't always personalize it. I mean, it is a kind of a common through line, but sometimes they don't. Uh, that being said, let's dive into it again. Uh, the number five in the planet Mercury for quickness of thought and change uh, with a further dynamic uh, mental power imparted. Uh, also insight and objective, uh, uh, insight into objective and universal truths, thanks to Uranus's uh, serving what the reading claims is a higher octave of Mercury. Now, this is the first time I've run across such a dynamic in the book, all right? And not being an astrologer by any stretch of the imagination, I have no real idea what that means. That just means it must bolster it to a certain extent, I would imagine. Uh, but what I have gleaned is Uranus is said to electrify and shake up the typical planetary traits uh, that come to the rulership of any given day. Uh, and that is usually for better or for worse. It just depends on which planet it is. And... Uh, uh, also, while serving to represent idiosyncratic behavior, a desire to change the rules, as, as well as an erratic and explosive nature. Ostensibly, the thing that you hide from other people, I would say. Uh, so, in addition to Mercury and the number five's uh, typical ability to allow one to recover quickly from the hard knocks of life, uh, this is quite the interesting entry, despite being rather uh, particularly sparse. I don't know what this higher octave thing means, but it, uh, it, it definitely wants, makes me want to uh, tr dive in and find out more about it. Because, uh, you know, what other planets are lending that kind of uh, emphasis to other planets? I don't know. Like I said, this is the first time I've kind of come across something like this in the book. So it's interesting. It's so uh, uh, rarefied to find there. Uh, but that having been said, that's your numbers and your planets. Hopefully you took something of value or drummed up some interest to find out some more. Um, but uh, let's move on to your tarot. That's right. One of the more eclectic of the New Age metaphysical ideologies there. But hey. It's in the book. It's your birthday. Hey, we don't have to take it home with us and start dealing out the cards to, uh, you know, predict our future and such or however they're used. So let's just see what it has to say. And sometimes we can make further uh, connections with the things that have been discussed. So let's dive in. The fifth card of the Major Arcana is the Heriophant, an interpreter of sacred mysteries who is symbolic of human understanding and faith. His knowledge is esoteric, and he has authority over things unseen. Favorable traits conferred by this card are self-assuredness and insight. Unfavorable traits include moralizing, bombast, and dogmatism. In February 5, people must be particularly careful of the outspoken and critical aspects of their nature. All right. 
by and large, a complete copy-paste job here with the tarot. Uh, they, they tacked on a little something to personalize it for you, just to, you know, maybe perk your ears up a bit. But uh, again, it was it was basically not very personalized. So uh, let's see what I had to say about it. Maybe we can uh, drum up a little more value here for you, though I will go over everything once again here. Uh, so the Heriophant, or the priest, for those uh, random viewers who may not be members of a secret society. That's right, the more conventional term of Heriophant, the priest. Uh, representative of interpreting sacred mysteries uh, and human understanding as well as faith. And it sounds... Um, like anyone you know, or does it sound like anybody you know? That's <laughs> that question there. Um, who maybe stares back at you from the gold gilded mirror? That's right. I got a little bit of a hint that you might uh, you might walk between or uh, with the cloud, you more elite classes there, perhaps. Especially if the secret society stuff is anything any kind of merit to it. Uh, let's see, favorable traits of self-assuredness and insight, and I would say I got that from the breakdown, so it's particularly apt in that regard. Uh, but unfavorable uh, mention of moralizing bombast as well as dogma. All right, so uh, even very apt in those regards too, assuming the breakdown applies. Uh, you have an opinion on uh, that which you have an eloquent understanding, right? And you're also apt to impart it on people. So just be mindful of the attitude with which you convey your insight, as they mentioned previously. Uh, you stand on too high of a literal or figurative soapbox, and it may come off like a religion, that negative dogma that they mentioned there. Uh, and uh, you might just come off like you're actually talking down to folks, all right? So you don't want to come off bombastic and all that either. And I would say that uh, based on the breakdown, that's not something you're apt to do because you seem very well controlled and like you're going to keep your uh, more explosive and erratic natures, uh, you know, maybe at home. You're not going to show folks that unless they're very intimate individuals with uh, someone you know, right? Uh, but yeah, something to be mindful of as a negative. You might have the capacity, but you might have the uh, discipline to keep it under control or the bearing is for as much. Uh, so that said, that's been your tarot. Hopefully you took something of interest from it. Um, like I said, I thought it was particularly apt. It's just, uh, and we didn't have to do much homework or reading between the lines to make those connections. And in this uh, particular Aquarius period, it's been a little bit difficult in some circumstances to see where these might apply. Uh, but uh, having been said, that's your tarot, so let's move on to your health. All right, your health. Those born on February 5 may have chronic health problems, uh, which they prefer not to talk about. And although they are generally healthy, there are usually certain body weaknesses which nag them throughout their lives. Usually one specific area of the body or one of a major system, to say the circulatory, nervous, lymphatic, or glandular, uh, which is vulnerable. Not uncommonly, this difficulty can be self-influenced or even self-induced all right don't you know that might be a little bit of a stressors that are causing that that was the through line for capricorn anyway i'm getting i'm getting ahead of myself a regular physician who sees them over the years is preferable to clinics or less personal treatment and provides continuity on february 5 people may well have to apply greater discipline to their diets. Uh, they must understand the importance of eliminating or reducing harmful substances. And here in parentheticals it says, usually either tobacco, alcohol, sugar, animal fats, or addictive drugs. Moderate physical exercise is recommended for most born on this day and team or one-on-one -on -one competitive sports for the more athletic. All right, very highly personalized health entry for you. A little bit different in terms of how they generally approach it, uh, but hey, that's been a little bit of a through line as well here in the Aquarius period. Uh, so let's dive in, uh, get into the weeds here. Uh, so you may encounter chronic health issues that you don't wish to discuss. Uh, a little bit of an Aquarius through line here insofar as every day has concerned this uh, almost tenuous uh, kind of a health matter there one way or another. Uh, to say over concern or under concern or misdirected focus, etc. Uh, the through line is it's always something and uh, in a lot of cases with previous zodiac signs it was very consistent about one thing or another and uh, here it's been variable I would say. 
Uh, with that in mind, concerns of a very specific uh, vulnerable area hasn't necessarily been mentioned outside of uh, sweeping generalities. Uh, for the to say in an Aquarius period, the body areas are the circular system and uh, or the circulatory system rather, and the, the lower legs, specifically the ankles. And here they mention cutting out animal and uh, animal fat specifically. And of interesting note, uh, Capricorn had the veins in the skeleton as their body area, so very similar. And they always got the, well, not always, but very oftentimes got the recommendation to cut out animal fats, same with you, but also dairy fats uh, in, in, with a concern on cholesterol clogging up the veins there. And I did see on one particular day for the Aquarius, they mentioned cutting down on red meat, ostensibly for your heart health there, considering that's part of the circulatory system. But also recommended for you was uh, be mindful of stroke and embolism. And considering that the lower ankle or the lower legs and the ankles being a body area for Aquarius as well, I've been recommending you get yourself a pair of compression socks. That's right. We also had varicose veins pop up on one day, so maybe mind that too, however you take care of those. Uh, what else do we have here? Um, so uh, maybe take note of all that. All right, they said moderate exercises, uh, moderate exercise for you, which is rather common. Uh, but this is the first mention, I would say, in Aquarius of competitive sport focus, all right? Perhaps to exercise that dynamic uh, planetary influence that uh, Uranus has on Mercury there. Um, usually if they recommend like competitive sports or aggressive exercise, it's usually for a Mars day. Uh, I, I kind of drill down on this common denominator here because Mars usually has like a lot of aggressive energy built into it. And so typically as follows in the health entry, they get aggressive exercise. Now, so I don't know if they drill down on this just based on planetary influences, but one could, ne could take that from that. And so the difference being here is uh, Uranus, is, or Uranus is a higher octave of that Mercury. So maybe that's why you got this competitive sports recommendation. That's the only difference I can really see there. Uh, that having been said, um, yeah. Just take that under advisement, I would say. Some of these days here previous, they haven't really drilled down on a specific exercise regimen. They just kind of sometimes say, hey, you guys generally have a very decent idea of what to do, but there's no real recommendation outside of those kind of generalities. So you got a very specific mention, so maybe try it out if you're uh, of, the, uh, of the mind to. Uh, that having been said, that's been your health, so let's dive in with some advice. That's right, you get some advice. I think we've already had quite a bit, but hey, let's see what they drill back down on here. Uh, they say give people a chance all right and don't expect everyone to move so fast all right try to be more transparent and make your motives clearer to others and people may not always understand your position all right hey i think we've heard quite a bit of this that's right but hey it uh, i would say there's a lot of value in it so it probably bears being re-mentioned so uh, let's dive in what i had to say about what they had to say all right give others a chance they said uh, so who knows what you could learn or take from the insight uh, of others or how important it might could be for your life. I don't think I wrote it that way, but who, who's to say what it could impart on you, all right? But if you're not apt to give folks a chance, you're never going to know, all right? Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see. People don't also, oh, yeah, people also don't often make a good first impression. So yeah, give them another chance to show you who they are, all right? Don't just... Uh, just go by your gut reaction there sometimes. Um, also vice versa. It sounds like you might not make a very good first impression sometimes also. So have that in mind as well. Uh, they said don't expect others to move at your speed. Very important here I would say. Uh, this comes up in a lot of uh, other entries also, uh, but in a different variety of ways. A lot of people will uh, uh, just kind of discount folks because they think they've got it all figured out already. I'd say that's a little bit here what we're going into with you also. Um, uh, but they were talking about speed wise, all right? In a lot of other uh, ways, some people are very technical oriented, very capable of the things they want to see have done. And uh, a lot of other people aren't. And so they have this baked in assumption of how things should be. And not everybody's going to be able to operate on that level. And so I often like to say just uh, if people are putting in their solid effort, you know what? Give them a chance, all right? Don't be too hard on them. That being said, there's a lot of folks who don't put in a solid effort, so maybe come down on them a little harsher, all right? Love your judgment on those folks who aren't doing what they're capable of. Uh, so 
and that was kind of that's kind of in line with the speed thing not everybody's going to be as quick fast and in a hurry as you are or as capable so just go into that with that knowledge baked in and uh, yeah adjust your uh, expectations i would say uh, effort for transparency they said um, hiding your nature and your motives keeps you at a distance from others i would say and this again is something that comes up very often uh, it might project a cold and hard to access exterior there if you're not more transparent with your emotions because I said you kind of lock those away you're an emotional creature but you don't show it and a lot of times people want to see that to some extent to kind of understand that you're also human and not just this this robot uh, uh, ostensibly uh, and uh, it could also be a um, what do you call it a difficult this I think I'm getting ahead of myself here <laughs> You may not be uh, doing yourself any favors either. You may think it's a good um, um, MO to have to just kind of keep up that wall, but you might not be doing yourself any favors. Who are these folks that you're missing out having in your life because you presented too cold? All right, maybe they're going by their first impressions. That's right. Uh, so yeah, there's be more transparent. So they also said people may not understand your position all right uh, I'd say it's an important note and ostensibly you're not being the one uh, and ostensibly you're not one who wants to explain your position right and this can be a, a difficult position to paint yourself into uh, let's see especially if you want people to lend credence to what you have to say but if you're cold and uh, you know kind of shut off not given any kind of uh, concern for what they have to say why do they have any concern for what you have to say, right? And then it also said that you might not care if they if they take it in or not. And so my question to you is, well, then why are you so apt to share these views if you don't care if they have any concern for them or not? It's a very interesting uh, question that came up while I was just kind of going through this. Yeah, so why do you want to share so bad if you have no uh, particular investment in what what their perception is? Only if they only if they kind of agree with you. Well, hey, you know what? Where's the value in that? Probably feels good for your ego, but are we exploring any kind of uh, new ground there? Probably not. Uh, but in any event, that's what I had to say about your advice. So let's move on to your meditation. That's right. It's your birthday. You get a meditation. Something to reflect upon if you like. All right, here we go. Getting a fire started can be much easier than extinguishing it. Interesting. I would say the opposite's true also. <laughs> okay, let's see. Let's, let's uh, do it one more time here. Getting a fire started can be much easier than extinguishing it. All right. Don't necessarily know what to make of this one for you, but uh, it's your birthday, your meditation. Even if I had some kind of interpretation, I wouldn't give it to you because I don't want to uh, influence it one way or the other for you. Uh, so that having been said, that's been your meditation. So let's move on to your strengths and your weaknesses that's right let's see where you got the girth and where you otherwise i don't know a little more deflated if you like within the metaphor that's right let's hold up the objective mirror and see where we're strong and where we're weak all right uh, your strengths your facile your fluence and you're graceful oh but your weaknesses that's right let's flip the objective mirror around to the side that blows up your face maybe shows off the things you otherwise a little more superficially insecure about your weaknesses you're abrupt you're antagonizing and you're superior oh i would say we kind of drilled down on these in the breakdown for sure that's interesting all right uh, a lot of times i like to say uh, our strengths and our weaknesses uh, you know our weaknesses can sometimes be strength it just depends on the individual and the situation more importantly there was a uh, one day i'd say about a month back you know uh, strength was impulsive but then the very next day it traded into being a weakness and it got me thinking like what's the disconnect why is this all of a sudden a weakness so like i said it just depends on the situation and the day but a lot of times i also like to argue that uh our strengths are going to help us improve upon our weaknesses if it's something that we feel needs improved upon. You're abrupt, antagonizing, and superior. Uh, well, if you're fluent and graceful, hey, you might just dance your way right through it, right? You're going to get to the root of it and uh, do what needs to be done in a fluent uh, fashion and, uh, yeah, improve upon it if you like. Uh, that having been said, is a weakness. Is there a case to be made that being abrupt, antagonizing, and superior uh, could be a strength? 
hey, I often like to uh, drill down on being in the boardroom or being at the at a table where you're kind of uh, when you're negotiating a contract. You know what? Somebody might not. They might be kind of flighty, right? Well, if you're abrupt, hey, you might get them to finally sign that dotted line, right? So it could be a strength in that regard. I know where they're coming from with the weaknesses. You're probably just too much of these things, too harsh, right? Too superior. But hey, if we just find a way to measure and balance that out, you know what? They could easily be strengths and uh, that that having been said i also like to argue uh if you do want to improve upon your weaknesses don't get rid of them altogether all right because they do make us part of who we are and again they could be strengths all right so yeah don't discount what you got is a weakness uh, that having been said that's been your strengths and your weaknesses let's move on to those born on this day that's right let's see who shares your company but as we do so something i like to do is focus on it from the perspective of figuring out our passions because too often in life i get out in the world meet folks and ask them what they do more importantly if they like it and they don't and i assume it's just because they got out of school and into some job to make ends meet and also maybe they just didn't know what they even like let alone what they have a passion to do because i think that takes time and energy to figure out and if you're working a you know five days a week job then on the weekends you're trying to rally for the next upcoming week just take a little bit of time off you don't have time to drill down on figuring out what your passions are, right? Uh, I think you do have it. You just, hey, you got to make an effort to carve it out and set some time aside for it. And I argue that it's important we're figuring out our, our passions so that we can be jumping out of bed in the morning, eager to get on with our day and, and find something that we take fulfillment from, right? So if there's anything I can wish for you on your birthday, it's that we're doing that figuring out our passions. And so maybe this is just the opportunity to do so by seeing who shares your company and what they did to get in a book. So let's look at it through that prism, all right? We start off with Adlai Stevenson, a Democratic two-time liberal presidential candidate and a UN representative as well as an Illinois governor. We also have Hank Aaron, The Hammer, I didn't know that, that was his nickname, an all-time home run and RBI leader and played 24 all-star games. We also have William Burroughs, the writer of Naked Lunch, a drug expert as well as an addict. We also have Sir Robert Peel, P-E-E-L, a British 19th century prime minister, J.K. Heisman, a French novelist of En Menage. We also have Jean Guerre, a New York playwright and a screenwriter of Atlantic City fame. We have Charlotte Rampling, a British film, stage, and TV actress. Barbara Hershey, a film actress. Roger uh, Staubach, a Dallas Cowboys football quarterback and the five-time NFC passing leader, as well as a Super Bowl MVP. We also have John Carradine, the film actor and father of David and Keith. William uh, William I. Jo Jovanovich. <laughs> Jovanovich. Yeah, I said it right. A publisher. It says Hancourt, Brace, and J Jovanovich. All right. Maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe that was the publishing name or the company, the company name of his publishing outfit. We also have Arthur Ox uh, Sluzberger, a New York paper publisher or a newspaper publisher, rather, of the New York Times and also son of the founder. We have Sir Avon L. Hodgkin, a British Nobel Prize winning physiologist and uh, responsible for studies into nerve conduction. We also have Robert Hofstadter, a U.S. Nobel Prize winning atomic physicist. We also have Andreas Papandreou, a Greek prime minister and an economist. And it also says he was exiled. Uh, we have Jennifer Jason Lee, the film actress. Stephen J. Cannell, a TV writer and a producer. Nathaniel Owings, an architect and an urban planner. Susan E. Hill, a British literary critic. Al Cooper, a singer, songwriter, and a keyboardist. All right. And those have been those born on this day. I know it's a big ask tall order to take inspiration for our passions from somebody else's accomplishments. But like I said, if I can wish for you for anything on your birthday, it's that you're putting in the time and the effort to carve out some time to do as much. Put in some effort to figure out your passions. Because if we're jumping out of bed in the morning to get on with our day and take fulfillment from what we're doing, hey, there's nothing better, I would argue. 
Uh, but that having been said, that essentially rounds out your birthday read. Uh, and I did butcher a few names there, so let's make up for that on my side of things by doing it on my side there. Uh, it's not done in malice, it's just hooked on phonics, doesn't always work for me with the names there. Uh, but that having been said, like I said, that rounds out your birthday reading, except to say your season is winter, your sign once again is Aquarius of the Aquarius II period specifically, uh, and your quality and element is fixed air. And this has been February 5th, the day of quiet eloquence from the secret language of birthdays by Gary Goldschneider and Hugh Stelfers. I have an affiliate link for this book down in the description if you're interested in picking up a copy and diving in further. Save the hassle after typing it in a browser there if you're interested. Uh, leave it underneath that little purse or up above a personalized mention for the uh, personalized message rather not a mention uh, for you birthday boys and girls there. So uh, this thing makes a great coffee table book if you're interested in carrying on a party, maybe for them secret organizations that you have come over. Maybe you just don't want to do the heavy lifting and having to break the ice for once. This book's going to get it done, all right? And you see the inner workings of those individuals who you maybe want to get a leg up on within the hierarchy of the organization there, who's to say? Uh, but that having been said, the book having been related, not altogether all too important. Uh, what is important, like I said at the top, wishing you a happy birthday. So once again, Happy birthday, all right? And for everybody else who joined us out of curiosity, hey, I hope you enjoyed yourselves. Took something of note, even though it wasn't your birthday. Uh, you know, regardless, you know, we can, can always just learn something from hearing other things and seeing how they apply to us. Be objective, right? But that having been said, lest I forget, your daily numbers. That's right, you're one and you're four for a five. Get out there, let the universe show you it's with you on your path. And you understand why I brought it up, all right? Stack up some coincidences, drum up some synchronicities. Yeah, see, taste, touch, feel a little bit of the magic, all right? And just enjoy yourself. You should be doing something fun on your birthday, I'd say. Uh, but that having been said, uh, I just wanted to uh, impart to you the uh, pleasure of sharing your time with you. I really appreciate it. And thank you for the privilege of allowing me to share your birthday with you, all right? I enjoy putting these things together for you. And sometimes it can be a little bit of a headache, a little bit of a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, harbinger of my time but you know what sometimes it's it's uh it just feels great to do as much for you and wish folks a happy birthday that's right uh but uh once again i just want to say happy birthday all right and take care of yourselves okay and uh you know what pick yourself up a pair of compression socks nobody wants them varicose veins right take care of yourself on your birthday all right take care of yourselves and once again happy birthday <laughs>